morning to all. I am Kurshid Begum, Assistant Professor, Department of Microbiology, KSR College of Arts and Science for Women. Today we will see about microorganism of air. Microbiology is the scientific study of microorganism. Microorganism are those organisms that are too small to see with the naked eye and include things like bacteria, fungi and viruses. Air microbiology is the study of living microbes which are suspended in the air. It is also called aero microbiology. The study of microorganism and their spores invisible to naked eye suspended in air. Study of aero spoilation, aerial transmission and biological material. It also includes the study of disease transmitted through respiratory route. The field of aero micro microbiology is important as it involves formation of aerosols. It deals with microorganisms present in the air indoor environment. They are microorganisms which are responsible for deterioration of storage material, equipment, library material and archives. Microbes can survive for extended periods indoor as they have relatively less exposure of radiation. The study of air in the atmosphere which is found outside the building, it refers to us outside the air, outdoor air of microbiology. Indoor or external neural environment, the expanse of space and the presence of air tuberance are the two controlling factors in the movement of bioaerosols. The number of kinds of microorganisms may vary from place to place, depending upon the human population densities. Some of microorganisms include algae, protozoa, yeast, mold. Mold uh, spores are predominant. Example, cladosporia. Bacterial species are spore forming, non spore forming. Hmm, source of air microbes. Some of the sources are listed below soil, water, wind, and trial action, human beings. Soil. Soil microbes distributed by the wind blow, liberated into the air, remaining suspended there for a long period of time. Man-made action like digging or plugging uh, the soil may also release soil borne microbes into the air. Water. Water microorganism releases in the form of water droplet or aerosols. Placing of water by wind action or tidal action uh, may also produce droplet or aerosol. Wind and uh, tidal actions. Air current may bring the microorganism from plants and our animal surface into the air. For example, spores are spores of Pusini graminis, human beings. The main source of airborne microorganism is human beings. Pathogenic flora of upper respiratory tract and the mouth are discharged into the air by activities like coughing, sneezing, talking and laughing. Forms of discharge. The microorganisms are discharged out in three different forms which are grouped on the basis of their relative size and the moisture content. Droplet, droplet nuclei and the infectious dust. Droplets. Droplets are usually formed by sneezing, coughing or talking. Each consists of saliva and the mucus. It has been estimated that the number of bacteria in the single sneeze may be between 10,000 and 1 lakh. The size of droplets determine the time period during which they can remain suspended. Most droplets are relatively large and they tend to settle rapidly in still air. The droplets containing pathogenic microorganisms may be source of infectious disease. Factors affecting microbes. Microbes are continuously in the state of stress, oxygen stress and ionic stress, temperature stress, moisture stress, humidity, UV radiation stress. What are airborne disease? The disease caused by air microbes are catch by breathing. They, they are called airborne disease. Airborne disease can spread when an infected person coughs, sneezes or talks. Certain viruses or bacteria take fight and hang in the air or land on, their, on other people or surfaces. Airborne diseases usually result in one or more of the following symptoms. Inflammation of nose, throat and lungs, coughing, 
sneeze in running no sore throat swollen gland headache loss of appetite fever fatigue uh, types of airborne disease many diseases are spread through the air including influenza tuberculosis measles mumps influenza most uh, of us have some experience with the flu it is spread so easily because it is contagious about a day before you notice uh, the first symptoms it is remain cont- contagious for another 5 to 7 days if you have a weakened immune system for any reason you can spread into other other for longer than that and there are many strains of the flu and they are constantly changing that make it difficult for your body to develop immunity tb is an airborne disease but uh, but this uh, bacteria infection does not spread easily you generally have to be close contact with the infected person for a long time you can be infected without becoming ill or infecting others thank you